Walk with me Please Just take my hand Randy Rain here and happy Halloween. I'm sitting in a real electric chair about to be electrocuted. Well not really. The word electrocute comes from the words electricity and execute. If you're seeing this video, I'm still alive. But this is electric chair and it is real. I used to perform the classic sideshow act, the electric lady. Behind me on this electric chair is a Tesla coil that I built. It used to work. It used to work really, really well. But this thing's been sitting in storage for a very long time. So on this Halloween, I'm going to try to repair it and have a little bit of fun. Now, it could be a trick that I get you to watch this and I don't get it working. Or it could be a treat and you see something really cool. You're just going to have to watch and see. Let's get started. So this is the Tesla coil that I built and here's the guts of it. It's called a spark gap Tesla coil. You take a AC neon transformer and it gets hooked up here and now it goes to these capacitors. I have these capacitors here. I have no idea if they work or not. This one doesn't look so hot. But anyway, what happens is the power builds up in this uh, capacitor here and once it does, it builds up enough, it'll eventually jump the spark gap right here. And you can adjust the gap right here. When it finally does jump over, it sends the electricity through this coil right here. This creates magnetism the magnetism is picked up in this coil and this coil, one end of the coil is just going to ground, literally ground and then the other one, usually they go to the big toleroid up here I just have it going to this thing, here's the other end of the wire it gets connected to there and it shoots out like that now this spark is not just happening once, it's happening like really really fast many many times. You don't want to look at this either. Trust me, I've done it twice and it's like a welding arc. It'll burn your retinas. This little section here is just for emergencies. If it ever gets built too much, it'll just exit to ground to be safe. So don't think I know what I'm talking about here. I don't. I can do DC electronics with logic circuits, but when it comes to this stuff, I get lost real easy. The way I got mine to work is just by playing with it. I kept changing the capacitors and the coils and the transformers and eventually I got it to work and actually got it to work really, really well. But the capacitors ended up blowing out and I've tried to replace the capacitor several times and it works good sometimes and then it doesn't with some capacitors. I, I don't, like I say, I don't know what I'm doing. so. Don't try this at home. This is serious, serious stuff. This will kill you. This part really won't kill you, but this part will kill you. And definitely will burn your eyes. But these capacitors may still be good. At least some of them. And I have some more capacitors here that I think I played with at one time. I don't really remember. And I found these. I have some more capacitors. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a capacitor bank with these capacitors. And I will mix them up in different ways and I'll just see if I can get this thing to work. Okay, so if I remember correctly, I had these and they worked pretty good, I thought. But they didn't last very long. I'm pretty sure this one's gone. It's also kind of bulging here. This one has a spot here with looks like a stain, so that one's probably not good. 
These may be good, I don't know. These are brand new, I know, never been used, so those are good. I have one, and I may have some more of these somewhere. I don't know. And I'm pretty sure I wired all these up at one point and tried it, and it worked, but just not very good. But I think these are all still okay. I'm going to start with these, but I'm not going to go all in a series. I'm going to try them in a con combination of series and parallel. So the first thing to do would just be to desolder all these things. Okay, so I think we'll cut these real short. Except for two on one side. Like that. Okay, so there's one set in series. And we'll make a few of those. Alright, so I have eight of these and they're all going to be connected here. So this will be in parallel, but these will be in series. I'm also going to do these as well. Okay, so there's the capacitor bank, and I want to state one more time that I don't know what I'm doing, so do not copy anything that you see me doing here. So this is my main coil, and it was just wrapped around this piece of bucket, is all this is. And it was just hot glued, which is what I'm going to do again, but this time, this time I'm going to add some double stick tape to help it out. Now for the top of this thing, I'm going to just use a little bit of CA glue and just glue this little cork onto it. And now this has to go in here. Now just use some more CA glue to get it to stay. Okay, so there's the capacitor bank in place. Okay, go ahead and tidy some of this up. Okay, well that was terrifying, and I tried different combinations here. Looks like these two, these are just no good. They, these don't do enough. When I put it, just these works real well. Just these works real well. Just on these works decently. When I add these in there anywhere, no good. So I finally got the Tesla cool working and figured it out. And so I was opening up the spark gap to see how much I could get it going because the wider that is, the bigger sparks in the Coronas come out the top. But that's also more electricity it puts on to the capacitors because it takes more to build up before it's able to jump across there. And of course, I blew out the capacitors. But that's okay because I learned that two of these blue ones as the proper farad value for my Tesla coil. I know if you put one in there, it doesn't work and blows it out immediately. If you put two of these in the series, it works great and it allows it to work for a while before it blows out the capacitors. So let's have a look at these capacitors. The farad value is 0.015 microfarads. 
the voltage rating is 6.5 kilovolts DC. Uh, you need more when you're doing AC, so that's kind of low. Now, if you put two capacitors in a series like this and it becomes one capacitor, what happens is each one gets a part of the voltage, so basically the voltage doubles. So the voltage was at 13,000 kilovolts DC. But if we look up capacitors in my getting started to electronics here, so it shows the formula to figure out capacitors in a series. So if we do this formula with these capacitors, we know that as two of them in this series like this, the microfarads is 0 0.0075 microfarads, and the voltage rating is at 13,000 volts DC. So these are the capacitors that I had, and I found more of these on eBay pretty cheap, so I bought some. So if I put two together and get the capacitance that I need, I can't put any more here, even though that increases the voltage, which is something I need. It also changes the value of the microfarads, and it goes down when you put them in a series. So then I guess I could put make two more of these, like this, and so I have a 0 0.0075 microfarad at 13,000 volts. Same here. Now if I run these in a parallel, these two connect. The voltage stays the same as the lowest one, which was, will be 13,000 volts. When figuring out the capacitance in parallel like this, you add these together. So if you add 0 0.0075, plus 0 0.0075, you're back to 0 0.015 microfarads, the same as one of these. So putting two in a series, two parallel, you get the same farad as one, but you've doubled the voltage capacity. That's too low for the capacitance. So I thought, what if I make another one of these? So here, two in series, two in parallel, two in series, two in parallel, like that. Now you have 0 0.015 microfarads at 13,000 volts. You have over here 0 0.015 microfarads at 13,000 volts. Now if you run these into a series now, so then if you run them in a series, you go back to that formula you're now back down to 0 0.0075 microfarads. And now half the voltage is coming in here and half of the voltage is getting here. So that's doubling our voltage again. So now we're up to 26,000 volts like that. So that's my plan. And I built this thing to do it. So at least we'll have these fit in like this come across, tied together here, and then the same thing on this side. And that will be my capacitor bank. Okay, now I need to control this. Now, I know everybody would like for a big, giant, ugly knife switch that you would slam down and turn this thing on for the electric chair. But I need to be able to control it while in the chair. And when you have actual electricity going into your body, it's going to want to come out of there. And having a big knife switch in your hand isn't a good idea. In a real tight world. Take away the barricades. Wanna ring well, we'll find a girl.
free by the midnight rules. Back out of the house, I'm slamming in the car. Pushing me around with that for the crew. Taking out the time, we're getting a fraud. Well, there it is, my version of the electric lady and a Tesla coil that I made myself. If you enjoyed this video, then, uh, you know. But, hey, I thank you for watching anyway. I especially want to thank these people right here. These are patrons. These are people helping me out to do all this craziness. And I thank them so, so very, very much. If you want to become a patron, there's a link and there's some perks if you do. I'll make you stuff. If that's not your thing, there's a PayPal donation if you feel grateful. Anyway, thanks again for watching, and Happy Halloween!